How you doing Houston, Texas and the rest of the world? Hey guys, it's Vicky. Welcome back. So it is no big surprise that I am a huge, huge, huge Selena Quintanilla fan. I mean, not really a surprise coming from your average Mexican American girl here. I absolutely adore her. I grew up with her music, the movie of her life. She is a role model to me. And I have always, ever since I was a little girl and I had the Selena Barbie doll, wanted that purple jumpsuit, the one that she wore at the Houston Astrodome. That purple jumpsuit is iconic, but I never really thought I could have it unless I guess I bought it from someone. I mean, they do have some online, but not all are as great. And also they're like really expensive. And so as I have been getting a little bit more into sewing lately, one day I was like, huh, what if I just make it? So that's what I'm going to be showing you guys today. Let me start though by saying that I am absolutely not a sewing expert at all. So please keep that in mind. I'm just showing you guys my process and how I made it, especially like with no real pattern for the jumpsuit specifically. But yeah, this is probably not gonna be perfect for those sewing experts, but if you're a newbie like me, or you're not, I mean, just stick around. You might learn something. Keep that in mind and please be nice. So without a further ado, let's get right into it. So let me tell you really quickly about the fabric. This is not the perfect fabric in terms of color. I did go to the downtown LA fashion district and I searched and searched and searched and some did have something that was a little bit more similar, but the quality wasn't as great. It was very like cheap and they marked it up a ton. And when I asked them why it was so expensive, they're like, well, because it's Selena's purple jumpsuit fabric. And I was like, really? So ridiculously expensive. And it was not even like really that great of a quality. And it wasn't even the perfect color either. It was like a really obvious purple and hers is more of a plum. My fabric is a little bit darker, but again, like in the light, in certain lights, it changes like hers did too. And actually it was inexpensive because I bought it at one of the stores in the downtown LA fabric district that specialized in like drapes and curtains fabric. So this jumpsuit was actually made with drapes fabric. And the material of the fabric is a type of lycra with little sparklies or sprinklies as Selena's dad would say. And I ended up buying about six or seven yards, which was more than I needed, but I wanted to be on the safe side and I was also going to make the bolero in addition to the jumpsuit itself. All right, the jumpsuit. Let's get started with the bottom half, which would be the pants. So I had no pattern for the jumpsuit. So for the pants, I created my own pattern. I basically took some tights that I liked the way they fit me. They were very high waisted. I marked them right below the knee because I wasn't going to need them all the way down because hers are bell bottoms at the bottom. And I essentially folded them in half, pulled out the crotch. What a lovely word. Pulled out the crotch and then um, folded it up to where I marked that line with my chalk. And then those folded pants, I placed them onto my uh, extended fabric. And then I was ready to pin them down. But at the waist, I made sure that I left myself two extra inches of fabric right above so that I could have that to take in later on for the waistband. And then once pinned down, I was ready to cut all around. And in addition to those two extra inches, everywhere else, I gave myself about half an extra inch of space uh, in order to be able to put the pants together. And I know I said all around, but I actually did not cut all around. I only cut on the side of where you see the crotch line. And then I opened up the pants and essentially folded them again, but to the other side. So this would have been like for the back side of the pants. It will all make sense in just a bit if you haven't done this. And I folded them onto the other half or the other side. So I flipped them from one side to another, pinned them on, pulled out the crotch line, made sure everything was aligned nicely. Uh, and then cut down again. And I was left with a piece that looked a little something like this, almost like a skirt or something like that. And I did this times two. So taking this cut piece of fabric, I placed it on top of my other fabric, pinned it on and just cut over it to have two. Once everything was cut out, I took my two fabric pieces that were laid together with the inside facing out and I sewed around the top. So from the waist all the way down to the crotch line. And once sewn, you can reveal what looks a little something more like pants if you fold it out the other way. So as you can see here, now I just need to sew in the legs from the inside, um, from the inner thighs. So that is exactly what I did. Pinning the legs in first, and as you can see, I took them in drastically. I have no idea what I did wrong. Working with stretchy fabric 
is hard in terms of like getting the measurements right. I obviously had way more fabric than I needed for the legs and I wanted these to be tight. So I took them in a little more. Ready to see my sexy white chicken legs? Mm, yeah. So for the bottom of the pants, you are going to need bell bottoms, which I had no pattern for. So I had to create my own and I essentially made two tiny circle skirts. Measured around my leg right below the knee and the length as well. And so this was basically to get the radius and the length. Ugh, math. So for the radius, I did 13 divided by 6.28, which gave me 2.07, so about two inches for the radius. And then for the length, you're gonna do whatever your length was. So mine was 17 plus two, so total 19. And my bell bottom pattern, I created on some wrapping paper. Gotta get thrifty. So I took my wrapping paper and I first marked the radius. So I made sure that was two inches in length from the Bonk. top outer corner, so two inches across, and then I essentially drew my half circle for my radius. And I used the ruler to help guide myself because I did not have one of those fancy compass like jiggy thingies. Then from the top, I measured the length, so I measured down 19 inches and basically repeated the same process that I did at the top, but this time at the bottom. And so once drawn out, I cut everything out, labeled it, made sure to add some labels for the folds, which you will see why in just a bit. Okay, now to cut these bell bottoms out, I am taking my fabric and folding it two times, so to have four layers. And then I am laying my pattern on top of it, making sure that the sides of the pattern or the triangle align with the folds. So that's why I labeled it. And once I made sure everything was in order, I cut it out into a smaller square and then just cut the pattern out. And once cut out, you can reveal your bell bottom. Before sewing this onto my pants, I did make sure to take in the bottoms of the bell bottoms, so the seam, so that I could have a seam line and wouldn't have that raw edge, sewed it on, and then I was ready to attach these babies onto my pants. And as you can see, I did try the pants on and marked where exactly I wanted those bell bottoms to be stitched onto. And once that was done, then I pinned them into place, aligning the bell bottoms with the chalk mark. From the top of the bell bottoms themselves, I gave myself about an inch to pin in place. And then as you can see, when I fold it back down, then it reveals a nice seam line. Trying to give you some more details and shots here of what this looks like because for some reason this was a little confusing for me. And then after that was done, I sewed the bell bottoms on. The waistband, the waistband is pretty straightforward. I basically took the measurement of my pants just to make sure I had it right. And then I cut that out times two. So if laid out the front of my pants measures 13 inches, I cut out a strap of 26 inches plus an extra inch, so 27 to take that in. And because I wanted my waistband to be two inches thick, I made the rectangle five inches wide in order to have an extra inch to take things in. And then once cut out, I took my piece of fabric, fold it, pressed it in, pinned it in place, sewed it, and then I was ready to pin it onto my pants. To make sure things were aligned properly, I took the waistband, folded it in half, and then pinned it down right into the middle of where the back of the pants is. And I started pinning from there, and I brought the waistband towards the front, overlapping each side and bringing it down in a sort of V shape because that is what Selena's pants look like. And this part is important, especially if you want to get that diamond shape in the midsection like she had on her jumpsuit. Then I just sewed it in place and my pants were ready. Woohoo! Now for the top half. So the top half of Selena's jumpsuit is essentially a piece of fabric that loops and crisscrosses itself. So to get my measurement for how long my fabric should be, I took my measuring tape and wrapped it around my neck and brought it down to my sides the way I would with a piece of fabric. And I got my measurement there. And then for the width, I essentially um, measured my chest here on each side and I got that plus an extra inch. And then I cut my piece of fabric out. In case you're wondering, I did 52 inches by eight. And before attaching this to the pants, of course, I took in the sides to make sure I didn't have any raw edges. And now I was really ready to pin it into place. So I crisscrossed it the way I knew I wanted it to sit. I wanted this to be thick enough to not show too much booby because Selena never did that. Even though she was a very sexy woman, she was also really modest. That is how she walked that fine line. It's these little details. So I measured that on, I made sure that it wasn't too, too revealing. And then I clipped it onto place from the sides and the middle. And then I secured everything in with pins before sewing. 
So yeah, even though it is a tight jumpsuit, those details are what set it apart, say from like Kim Kardashian or Demi Lovato's version of it. I mean, no shade if that is what you like, more power to you. But in reality, this is not meant to be like ultra revealing. Okay, so Selena's jumpsuit also had straps at the back and these help just hold everything in place if you know what i mean so i basically took my measuring tape and measured my back this was very difficult especially when you don't have a mannequin also excuse my hairy armpits sorry but yeah i took the measurements for what those straps should be made some marks and then cut out my straps i ended up going with about a two inch width for the back ones and then i just followed the same process that i did for the main piece at the center pinning the sides sewing those in and then sewing the two back straps to the back and sides of the jumpsuit Oh, and that front middle part where it crisscrosses, I did hand stitch. The bolero! We're almost done. So for the bolero, I did have a pattern. I took this pattern from the 90s or early 2000s maybe. Um, and it had a bolero pattern in there. So I cut that out and then pinned it into place on my fabric and it made it so much better and easier. I don't know if I could have done this without it. This is the first time that I have ever used a pattern. And let me tell you, it was scary. I actually did not end up doing the lining and I'll talk about that in just a bit because it was just a little too advanced for me. But yeah, once my pieces of fabric were all cut out, I put them all together, starting with the vest first. The vest was a little bit longer than I needed it to be. Hers is very, very short. It ends right at the peak of that diamond that she has at the center. So I ended up folding and cutting it in a little bit more. And that seemed to do the trick for me. And then finally, when the vest was really done, I was ready to attach the arms or I should say the sleeves. Oh my goodness, I am tired. So I sewed the sleeves together and then I pinned those and sewed those onto the vest. So the very last thing that I had to do for the bolero and the jumpsuit was sew on the buttons. So I got three of these diamond sparkly buttons that very much resemble the ones from her jumpsuit. I found these at the downtown LA fashion district for a dollar a piece and I sewed on my buttonhole. And yes, I did do the buttonhole by hand and did not use my machine. By the end of this, I just could not with my machine anymore. I just wanted to get it done with. So I did it by hand but it still worked. After I sewed on that button onto the bolero, I also made sure to add shoulder pads because this is a 90s ensemble and Selena's uh, bolero did look like it had some pretty sturdy shoulder pads on there. I took these from an old dress that I thrifted that I did not like the shoulder pads on. And for the very, very last thing, I sewed on the buttons to the sides of the belt bottoms. Almost time for the big reveal. I did, of course, have to do my hair and makeup to show you guys the full look. So I did straighten my hair because my hair is wavy, curly. And then after that, I just did a really quick makeup look. And there's this image going around that compares Selena to JLo to Christian Serratos. And so I used it as my main reference to see the similarities in all of them. So dark brows. For the eyes, I went with a really light color at the lid and then a dark brownish and gray at the crease. And then of course did some liner. I didn't wing it too, too much. She wasn't doing that, but I did apply some to my waterline. And then of course did some mascara, also contoured a teeny bit, especially because I am super pale. So bringing some color into my face, applied a little bit of blush. Her Astrodome look wasn't too crazy. It was pretty natural. And for her lips, you can of course go for a super bold, bright, red but i went with something that looked a little more like what she was wearing which was a brick actually her favorite lip color was brick by chanel so this one kind of dupes it a little bit the combination of colors that i used and that was it i was done actually no just kidding i also had to do my faux bangs um i don't have bangs but i did fake them by twisting the front of my hair in and then pinning it into place and done <laughs> And this is it 
Uh, this is the final outfit and look. I have my Selena jumpsuit. Life is complete. I know that it is by no means perfect. It is mine in the end and I am so happy with it. If there were some things that I could do over or do different if I were to do this again, it would definitely be um, doing the lining for the jacket because I got really, really impatient there towards the end. Like I just, I don't wanna deal with it. And then the other thing would be also with the jacket, the button um, or the button hole. I mean, this one is something that I know I could have done, but again, I ran out of patience towards the end and I was just like, I just wanna get it done. So like the button hole, I did it manually and it probably didn't turn out perfect as well as it could have with a sewing machine. I could have watched more tutorials and I was, but I just wasn't getting it. And again, it all came down to patience. So just learn how to use the button hole setting on my machine next time around. This guy is looking at me like he is so hungry and needs a snack. We are getting there, buddy. So yeah, those two things, but I don't care. This is good enough for me. Isn't it, Charlie? Isn't it? I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this tutorial. If you're not making it, at least you had fun watching me make it. If you like this video, like this video. Do not forget to subscribe for more videos like this one. I think I might be doing a little bit more sewing on here. Not too much, but a little bit of more sewing when it comes to like retro remakes and whatnot. So yeah, subscribe for more vintage and retro stuff like this one. I hope everyone's doing okay. Sending you guys all so much love. As always, sending you a super duper big virtual hug wherever it is that you are in the world. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. And then I spent so many nights thinking how you did me wrong And I grew strong And I'm the light of the world I said it on the air on the radio Whoa!